Hey folks, so welcome back. As I'm sure you can probably tell from the title of this video and possibly even the thumbnail, I've got V2 here. So unlike the uh, original backlight kit that I uh, that I have here, uh, this one is supposed to promise the uh, fix right out of the box for the color palettes and not just that, but an improvement on the contrast for the grays. So. Let's see if we can't get that, put that to the test here. Um, so full disclosure, my kit, of course, I didn't buy it. It was provided to me th thanks to uh, Retro Game Repair Shop. Um, my kit did actually get damaged in shipping. So I have already been through this. I have already installed it. I have already tested it out. It does work, and I have already had to fix it. Um, but that is besides the point. That is pretty atypical, I'd like to point out. Uh, but so what ended up happening was I had an issue with the rotary encoder that I did fix, but in the process I did damage the LED and I fixed that too, but I didn't have any red LEDs. So my LED is going to end up being blue, which is not typical of the actual kits, but otherwise I do have the rest of it right here. And, uh, let's take a look at the donor here. So I've got this Game Boy from... I don't know, probably J4U because that's where I get the rest of them. It does have a little bit of corrosion in the battery compartment that I'm going to have to clean up at some point, but that point is not tonight. And it does work, but as you can tell, LED has seen better days. Uh, oh, it didn't even read my game either. That's no fun. Uh, I might have to take a look at that. Hopefully that's not a... Uh, recurring issue. But yeah, there it goes. Maybe it just needs to be cleaned out. Either way, uh, this LED LCD has some problems. Uh, now, vertical lines aren't too difficult to fix usually, but usually it's nowhere near this bad. Uh, so instead of just trying to give that a fix, we're going to pull this apart, swap in a backlight, and uh, We'll, we'll go from there. Um, as you can tell, just you know, side by side, this one is quite yellowed. I'm not going to bother trying to save it. We're just going to use a new shell. But uh, let's go ahead and get it torn down. Let's see what we're working with here. Once you got the six screws out, should come out nice and easily. Just got to separate those two ribbons. So thankfully, the inside of this thing isn't too bad at all. There's quite a bit of flux in there. It's no big deal. Uh, if you're reshelling your Game Boy, you're going to need to pop this apart. But if you're just dropping in the backlight kit, don't have to take apart this part. But like I said, I'm I'm reshelling mine because this thing's this thing's kind of gross, kind of yellowed, and I have that new nice new shell that I want to use. So let's try it out, yeah. All right. So for once. I don't think I actually need to fix anything on this Game Boy. It could probably use some new caps, but none of these are obviously bad. So, I'm just gonna leave it for now. So the new shell that I'm installing here, it's one that I've been meaning to try out for a while. I got this bad boy from Kitsch Bent here, and I got a few other goodies in here. We'll come back to this in a minute. And I'm going to be using these buttons from um, Retro Modding. I meant to use them in the other Game Boy, but ended up using them using the. Uh, yeah, I got the buttons swapped around by accident, but it's okay. We need to transfer over 
this metal shielding. Metal shielding. It would look better without, but probably have to do some other mods if I wanted to leave it out. So I'm not going to do that. All right, so that's installed there. Next, we need the uh, spring terminals and I'd recommend just buying new ones because the alternative is reusing the old ones and if it's anything like my case they're covered in corrosion I don't have new ones because I am not a forward thinker but I'm gonna use these for tonight anyway they pop out pretty easily you just gotta fold that tab in and then they drop right out. And now, eventually I'll try moving this sticker over too, because why not? But that's for another time. Now we're going to go ahead and move on to the front half here. About 8 million more screws. All right. I feel like I'm forgetting something because it's not coming up. But I don't see any missing screws. Maybe it's just glued down because the previous owner was, uh, like to live dangerously. There it goes. No, it's not too bad. I've seen worse. It's interesting. Is uh, I don't know if that's supposed to be like that. I've never seen another one with uh, those two. Missing solder, basically. It's probably not important, since other than the lines, it was mostly working fine. But, yeah. Anyway, it's pretty gross. I'm not going to be re 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 reusing any of this. But if you were reshelling your original, you'd want to take some... Or, not reshelling. Shoot. If you were using your original shell, you'd want to take some flush cutters, snip off this screw post this screw post and then this leftmost support up here but i'm not going to do that i'm going to try cleaning this one up maybe even try my hand at um de-yellowing but again another video for another time i'm going to use this one which modifications are the exact same thing snip that off snip that off and uh this leftmost support here. And uh, try your hand at using fire to polish this up. Uh, where is my knife? There it is. I'm just gonna Ah, damn it. That's why it wasn't cutting right. Oh, well. And unfortunately, that's going to be 
below the lens, so we are going to see that. I think I'm going to pause for a moment, see if I can't go find something to clean this up a little bit. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment. So, fun fact, uh, kitsch bent shells are prone to cracking when exposed to heat, so don't do that. Also, highly recommended, don't set it on fire. That makes it even worse. Um, so, yeah. If you know what you're doing, it'll work out very well for you. If not, you'll just totally ruin it like I just did. And uh, I mean, it's not terrible, but um, OK, well, anyway, I suppose that's besides the point. Now that I've got just the two screw posts trim, you don't need to trim these bottom ones here. Um, that's where this thing comes into play. So this is, I think, somewhat unnecessary. It's easy enough to do just by eyeballing it. But if you're the type that needs your hand held, which, I mean, clearly I am, <laughs> um, there's this here. Uh, now, this is made by someone by the username, I believe, JDM Dingo. Please forgive me if I'm getting that wrong. And uh, actually, I'm going to take 30 seconds and go double check because I have it open here. Yeah, it is JDM Dingo. I'm pretty sure you watch my videos, so um, thanks for making this, if you are out there. Thanks, dude. Um, but anyway, 3D print this. This is a bracket for getting the uh, LCD lined up. And let me... Yeah, all that gunk fell out of the DMG. It's gross, right? So this goes in there and you can use it to line up like that. Ta-da! Oh, it's so terrible. <laughs> so don't do what I did. But anyway, yeah, so the idea is you take this bracket and you tape it down. That way it doesn't go anywhere and then you can adjust the placement of your LCD with this. Or you don't even have to adjust it, you just line it up at the corner and um, plop it down and Bob Gianti. Um, I'm not going to leave this bracket installed once I got the LCD in because this is a clear shell and this print, quite frankly, is not the greatest. But I think we can make it work. So before installing the bracket, we're going to go ahead and uh, install the um, the converter board here and it's kind of a pain in the butt clear some stuff out of the way here so I can bring this down it's kind of a pain in the butt because this uh, flat flex connector right here I don't I don't want to say it's the wrong one it just it's kind of, it's there's no other way to describe it really it's just a pain in the butt uh, so if you got those two lined up, insert that there. Can try and flip this over. And of course my camera's in the way, sorry, I gotta lift that up. That'll go down like that. You know it's lined up when this white line is perfectly parallel with the uh, connector itself, as you can see. And on the newer kits, it looks like there isn't any um, insulation on the back of the LCD itself. It really doesn't make that big of a difference, uh, but... If you're paranoid, go ahead and insulate it now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip that step. But what I am doing, I'm trying to grab some of my uh, some of this stuff here. So I've got, and I know it comes with some tape, but these are some thin strips here. I want to cut off a nice big chunk. So I'm going to cut this down and then 
we're going to use half of it. I don't even know how that happened. There we go. Just slap that on the back there. And hopefully this never has to come up. If it does, there will be uh, lots of tears shed. But this is just so it doesn't really move around on us. So we have room to work. And let's go ahead and get this installed now. So the idea, where'd my tape go? Here it is. So we're going to cut some tape, some double-sided tape down. We're going to install it using the bracket and see what happens. So I'm not too tremendously concerned about dust because I'm sure I'm, sure I'm just going to rub my fingers all over it like I usually do. But I do want to make sure that the tape is nicely straightened out and lined up because it is a clear shell. Just put some on the top and just put some on the bottom. I have no idea how good this tape is, but it's the tape it comes with. Let's, let's find out together. And this is not going all the way at the top. Just a wee ways down. Just making sure those are pressed down nice and flat. And there we go. So that's not stuck down too tremendously well. So we want to put some stuff on the side here as well. Uh, I'm going to try and just put some under, under where the lens is going to go. So that's right up here and here. Just to kind of hold it down and uh, the tape it comes with in this particular case, isn't really wide enough to do a nice long strip, so I'm going to use some Kapton tape here, if I can. I think I'll cut this with scissors so I get some nice clean edges. Might work better if my scissors weren't dulling, but it is what it is. And again, this is just to hold the LCD down. I should have cut that strip in half because this stuff is super wide. But 
pretty sure I made mention before about how I'm not really a forward thinker. Yeah, I have to cut this one in half anyway. Save that for later. I kind of messed that one up, didn't I? That's okay. I think it'll be good enough. And right on schedule. Just rub my fingers all over it. Wipe that down. Okay, let's go ahead and continue the assembly here. I got my uh, buttons. I think I'm missing something. Oh, it's over here. So I don't know what the heck happened here, but that's not supposed to be like that. There's a, both of them are like that. Let's see if we can just pull that out. Yeah. I have no idea what's up with that. Pretty sure I got these from retro modding. So uh, I'm gonna blame them, but it's, Really not that big of a deal, it's just weird. I don't know if that's like part of the manufacturing process or... There we go. And before we get too much further, let me go ahead and boot up the soldering iron. Because even though this kit does not require swapping any, um, any data lines or anything, it does not come with a speaker. So we gotta recycle this one to clean it up oh, knocking stuff over here take a little bit of tape this is just um, what's the name of that tape I can't believe I'm blanking on the name it's this painters tape masking tape that's what it is I'm just using this stuff because it's not that sticky or at least it is pretty sticky, but it peels off nicely. But I'm just trying to clean off all the loose lint and stuff. And... Detach that. So that we can solder it down. Does not matter which is which. Either lead should work in either hole. And fair word of warning, this pad on the right here, you're going to need your soldering, you're going to need to crank your soldering iron up extra high and hold it there for a bit before the solder is going to really wet to the pad. But shouldn't be too bad. Not really happy with how that came out though. Let's see if we can't fix that. Let's just add more solder to this side. That'll clean it up nicely. There we go. Now we're done with the soldering iron too. All right. Let's go ahead and get this screwed down here. Oh, forgetting a part. Forgetting a step. So we need to go ahead and attach this ribbon cable. The contacts face down on this board. So 
so that we can install this. Perhaps. Something's getting stuck. Oh, it's the speaker. There it goes. And then another 8 million screws need to go back in, wherever my screwdriver is. There it is. One moment. Word of warning, if your uh, lens doesn't seem to fit right, it kind of weeble wobbles, it's these two screws. You might have them too tight or not tight enough or something. So that feels terrible. I have no idea why. Maybe I just have uh, unreasonable expectations there. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and continue. Now, I forgot a step here, so I need to back up just a hair. And last but not least, we need to trim off this part of the uh, back shell. And again, I'm going to get the knife out, clean up my cuts, and make things so much worse. There we go. And last but not least, it's not explicitly necessary, but it does help with some installs if we trim the leads on some of these components back here. I think just these two is going to be fine, but I'm going to do this one as well, just in case. That should be it. Now we just need to put this together. And uh, it doesn't matter too terribly which side is up, but I'm going to stick with the stock method and use the pins facing up. And get this stupid thing in there. This has always been my least favorite part. There it goes. Oh, forgot something obvious. And uh, don't mind me, I'm just sticking my fingers all over this thing again. go. There's that. where my fingers were again. I'm 
I'm thinking for future installs, the lens is the first thing I should do, not the last thing. Look at that, that's terrible. Oh, I should replace these screws too. Oh well, maybe next time. Terrible. All this could have been avoided had I just not touched it in the first place. Aw, I even scratched it. Good lord. Yeah, so future reference. Once you got the LCD in there, pop the lens on and um, you'll avoid all this trouble. Hopefully it won't look too bad with the lens on. Let's find out what I do with them. There they are. So my choices are, between what I have, I have a Play It Loud, a Play It Loud, and the original. I want to do the Play It Loud. I'll save the original one for another install. And unfortunately this one does not have a film on it that I can remove for your viewing pleasure. I'm on a roll tonight. Keep messing that stuff up. Okay. So when reinstalling these, you want to fold these tabs out right here so that they don't fall out once reinstalled. But I'm not doing that at this moment because I still want to clean up the corrosion on these. I just haven't yet. Probably should have done that while I was waiting for the camera to cool down during at some point, at least, but, oh well, there we have it, and let's pop a game in here. Oops, that was already off. So, and again, the blue light is mine because I had to make a repair, not Typical of the V2 here. So let's do... Uh, what am I looking for? I want the gradient one. There it is. So we can go ahead and take a look at the gradients here. So this is the default gradient that they often show it off with on uh, Pokemon Yellow. You can see white, yellow, pink, blue. I don't have two sets of batteries. If I did, I'd boot this one up and take a look at that. Oh, you know what? I actually do have two sets of batteries. So there is the default palette. And I can switch over. Got blue. Apparently installing IPS kits is illegal now. Oh, and apparently there is not enough trimmed. 
There we go. Green, red. Focus on the Game Boy, not the reflection. There we go. Green. I like the olive one the best. Not sure I like this one. And then here's the grays. This is significantly improved over the original. Just the contrast between the two. Much better. And then back to default again. So, yeah. Let's, let's try out some games, huh? crank the brightness all the way up we can hear it complaining uh, and before we get into a game let's try the uh, scrolling bar test so we can see that handles that spoiler alert it handles it just fine as you can see there's very minimal uh, tearing or dropping the only time that something occurs is there's a quick tear right about where my finger is uh, every single time the LCD resets. So what this test is doing is it's do it's scrolling across constantly, and then every 256 frames or whatever it is, it's going to issue a reset command, which games do every time, uh, like during a screen transition or you know basically every time the screen changes from one scene to the next, and um, for context, no backlight kit handles this gracefully. Not even uh, OEM screens handle this gracefully. This is probably one of the best that I've seen among backlight kits. Okay. And I know I can hit the button on the flash cart, but it just, it's so like out of mind every single time. Let's try Pokemon Silver. No sound. What's going on here? I don't have any sound. Well, shoot. I should have checked that before I did anything else, huh? Oh, it's the volume wheel. I'll have to take this Game Boy apart again. liking this d-pad um, there we go but come on left not down not up no. other left right yeah as we can see test I usually do that's also working fine let's get a different Looks good to me. So I'm thinking it's the membrane. Cause look at how loose that is in there. And just doing this is enough to trigger that over. Uh, let's try. <sighs> Come on. Back up. Mario Land, there it is. You'd see how terrible it is, and I'm going to blame everything on this D-pad, because it's definitely the D-pad. Oh, that's interesting.
That's new. Let's reset it. Try it again. It might just be the ROM, because this is all my uh, backups. Hence the name of the folder, GB Backup. Yeah, we'll just assume that's a bad dump. But, I mean, so far so good. It looks a lot better than the old kit. If there's anything in specific y'all want me to try out, let me know. Glad to... Now yeah, let's do... Oh my god. Let's do that. Let's do Zelda. See how that looks. I don't expect we'll run into any issues, but let's find out. So, no real ghosting that I noticed on the other kits. Works nicely. Much better than this D-pad at least. And again, we still have the uh, flashing flickering on his chain, but as I tried to explain in one of my other videos, that is because of, um, that's a shortcut that, deve that the developers used because transparency wasn't really a thing that was supported. So instead they just flash that on and off, on and off, on and off real quick. And due to the ghosting on the original screens, which by the way was terrible, uh, that achieved a semi-transparent effect. Whereas on these screens, which have much better response times, it just looks like it's flickering. But it is what it is. It's not really broken per se. Otherwise, this looks fantastic. Oh, I like this. I like that too. I still don't really like this one but personal preference, I guess. Black and white, that looks great. I don't really like this one at all. Maybe it looks good with Pokemon Yellow. This one probably looks good with Kirby. And back to blue again. So yeah, there we go. I think this is good enough spot as any to and leave off. So I will uh, I'll do exactly that. If y'all have any questions, let me know. Be glad to uh, glad to indulge there. And um, again, I did get this kit. This was provided to me by Retro Game Repair Shop. Um, I'm pretty happy with it so far. My biggest complaints are due to my installs, my particular install itself, not anything to do with the kit itself uh, like I'm not really happy with this d-pad and I'm pretty disappointed that I messed up the shell so bad up there but that's that's on me that has nothing to do with the kit um, very happy with the performance as well much better than the old kit I'm really happy with the contrast as well uh, much better than the old kit at least for the black and white color scheme um, the other palettes are mostly the same and, uh, yeah, there it is. Thanks for watching, guys. Have an excellent night.